Hey everyone, my name is Jeff Switzak. I am a senior product manager at Amazon on the Career Choice team focused in on distributed education. I'm excited to be here today. Um, I'm going to be presenting to you uh, relationship building, not stakeholder management. So a lot going on relative to that topic. Excited to break it down for you. Um, hit me up on LinkedIn and or Twitter. My handle on Twitter is jswitek84. Um, on LinkedIn, you'll see the actual notes itself. Also provided my email. If you want to email me directly, jeff.switek at gmail.com. Do my best to reply as quickly as possible. So really excited to talk, uh, talk to you today about this topic. Um, you know, I, through my career as a product manager, <clears throat> I've been focused in on this space for over about five years now. And what I've noticed is that relationships are everything. Um, so moving beyond just, hey, you're a stakeholder and talking about how you can build relationships, how you can understand people is one of the most vital things that you can do. So let's jump in and I'll give you a brief saga about me. Um, and uh, give you some context of what we're talking about today. So a little bit uh, more information about where I come from and you know my career. Overall, um, I actually came out of school with an operations degree. So kind of backed into product management, if you will, uh, and landed at an IT company, Manhattan Associates, where effectively um, I was doing uh, you know IT implementations. Uh, for warehouse and transportation management. Uh, that was great. Learned a lot. Went over, did a supply, day, a supply chain redesign in Georgia Pacific. Had, a, had an old manager of an internship reach out to me and was like, hey, why don't you stop moving toilet paper and start selling iPhones? And it was an easy, easy, uh, easy sell, easy pitch. So then I started at Apple. Again, focused in on the operations side. Apple taught me three things, collaboration, which we're going to get to and absolutely talk about, attention to detail and passion. Passion for me has always been the products, made my transition to product management, staying in Austin, Texas. And this is actually my trailer or my mobile office in Austin, Texas. So welcome to Jeff's trailer, if you will. And um, been, made, the, made the transition to get an MBA to pursue product management and Dell gave me an opportunity out of the gate within software and services. Focused in on software services side for the last five years or so. Love it. Um, helped transition a process that was very much people and, and parts related <clears throat> into something that was broader. They had a crawl walk run about um, how we're going to automate tasks for the IT admin via a software solution. Through that, it led me to Amazon because I saw that a decentralized and distributed environment is more and more um, powerful and is more meaningful and have been in Amazon um, since the early summer. Love Amazon. There's a lot of great learnings there. PRFAQs that you guys are more than familiar with um, and some of the, the larger context of, of team building and the key principles and foundational items of the company. Very much customer centric. So one of your customers, one of your internal customers are your stakeholders. But they're not your stakeholders. They're your team. They're your friends. So the first thing that I want to do today is I want to start breaking out you know, how to approach this. So if we're thinking about team building as relationship management and relationship building and not stakeholder management, well, how do you go about doing it? Well, first you have to actually do it, right? You have to get in there. You have to put yourself out. You got you to gotta learn by doing and, and live through iterations, just like software, right? The more you iterate, the better it becomes, the closer you get to the fit that needs to happen. So I'll tell you a brief story, of what happened at me at, you know, one of my companies that I joined. So I came in, I had a great idea. Um, and we'll see if it's a great idea, actually, it's how it turned out from the story. You know, not so much maybe, but I quantified it at about $80 million. And it was the right, it was the right business move. The strategy was there. 
I had it. I knew that if we just tweaked this offer just a little bit and we did it in a certain part of the world that the business case would open up and we would easily make $80 million a year and it's a slam dunk. Why hadn't anyone thought of this before? I mean, I don't know. Maybe someone just, you know, wasn't wasn't looking in the right spot. And lucky me, I found it. So what I did is I, I found everyone associated with this product, right? Everyone associated with this offer. I slammed them all in a meeting. I had there and I had my slides pre Like I worked on my slides for a week. And they were beautiful. I was practicing my pitch. And I had every single stakeholder that ever meant anything um, to that offer in the room. And I started on my pitch. And I got into the first slide. And it went crazy. No one was aligned. People were talking over each other. There was disagreement and discord throughout. And my $80 million idea that I was so invested in, that I worked so hard in isolation on, failed. And I, you know, I I was a younger product manager at the time um, and I was distraught, right? I was, I was like, Hey, this, from a strategy perspective, this totally makes sense. Like why, what's, what's wrong? Like, what did I do wrong? And there were a number of things. So I want to talk to you about those areas within that situation that, you know, led to the failure of the idea and ultimately not adopting it at all. So let's start breaking out those areas of where things went wrong. And there are five key ones that I want to talk to you about today. First is the audience, who they are, what they do, what's important to them, how you relate. Don't skip that small talk, communicate. The second is the problem, not the solution. Focusing in on the thing that's broken. The third, tell your story. I told you my story at the top of this uh, video and top of this webinar. Now, that's where I come from. That's my professional career. You know more about me. I'm, I'm a new father. I'm experiencing that. You know, uh, I came from my parents were born in the Northeast. I moved to the South and then I moved Southwest to Austin. All those things matter. All of those life experiences are ways to relate. If you can communicate that in the business problem you're solving, you got something. Establishing a brand, who you are and what you stand for and what you mean to that organization and also in your life. And timing is everything. It may not be a good idea to start soliciting a new process improvement at Apple during peak iPhone launch, for instance. And don't think I didn't try to do that because I definitely did and it failed. Um, so learn from experience there and iterating. So those are the five areas. Audience, problem, not the solution. Tell me a story. Establish a brand. And timing is everything. So let's break out that, that first area. And that's the audience. And really what it comes down to is knowing your team. Right? So if you take a look at that slide, slide, slide four, it's your network and it's the broader network of people that matter. How is the organization structured? Who are the key players? Know your org, know the problem you're solving and the org that it touches. So if the organization is in silos, if it's grouped by product or if it's grouped by functional area, who leads them? Who has the ear of the leader who is the most important influential stakeholder that gives the thumbs up or the thumbs down similar to gladiator that's who you really want to talk to that's who you want to know know the individual contributors who click below the decision maker who understand the problems at hand and how their leader will be thinking about those problems if you connect those dots and you understand that larger network, 
you're then able to navigate that network in those waters to figure out the key pain points, to know the sticking points in the discussion and the roadblocks that you're going to occur. So you have to know that team. You have to know that network and the way it's structured, the people underneath it, who to talk to, to better understand what the feedback's going to be to get in front of it, to help that pre-wire. The way I generally do this, and this is, you can get super clunky, right? Or you can get super technical rather, and you can bust out a spreadsheet, um, or you can get visual and throw it in PowerPoint, or you can just keep it in your head. Um, I find that all of them work. With that said, um, I did list a few screenshots of, of ways to look at it. So one area, especially is if you're in a huge organization and it's super cross-functional with hundreds and hundreds of people, you're going to want to list out your stakeholders by name and then the, who that contact person is, what power they have, the interest, and then the engagement strategy that you're going to um, really start you know, talking to them about. Some managers love to delegate work and decisions to their ICs. Others, you know, obviously are going to be more involved in that decision making. You have to get to know that. And you have the only way you can do that is through one on ones, through talking consistently and actively. So focus in on that. So if you break that out, the contact person is not only that leader, which I alluded to before, it's also the individual ICs underneath that. So understanding that web the power. So what do they really control? And what this power area helps tell you is like, okay, well, this is what they're responsible for. This is the scope of their influence. Then that power area helps you better identify those interests and goals. How is that leader being identified? Or how is that uh, leader being evaluated? What is in their long-term interest for their goal? Understanding how they're thinking where they're going, what is self-serving to them to say, yeah, thumbs up, and what is not saying thumbs down. That is then going to help determine your engagement strategy. If you have a detractor, you know, you may want to uh, tap dance around some of these issues initially, but at some point you're going to have to lay the cards on the table and you have to say, this is what I think, here's why we should do it. And if they disagree, then you're going to have to create the critical mass or the advocates or that, um, that collaborative base that is with you to help support and drive the idea through. So it's a little bit of politics. It's a little Machiavellian, but it's super crucial. So if I go back to that Apple example, <clears throat> excuse me, at the start, you know, what did I do wrong? I didn't understand the web of the network. I didn't understand, and there's a great book called The First 90 Days. Check it out. Uh, they say, hey, the shadow organization. The shadow organization is the organization that, hey, we're making decisions based off of X, Y, and Z. We're, we'll tell you it's, it's uh, A, B, and C, but really it's X, Y, and Z. So being able to know that, seeing through that, that's by understanding the power, understanding the interests, and knowing how the sausage is made. It comes through experience. Um, I'll tell you that, again, iterations are key here. Start with the idea you're maybe not invested in, but if you can run it up the chain and see how things play out, the next time you get up there, it's going to go a lot smoother, guaranteed. So check out a few of those different uh, methodologies. Again, use Excel, you can use PowerPoint, you can just store it in your head, but pay attention to that network, who has the power, what they're motivated by, and, and then develop an engagement strategy with that network. So second one, the problem to the solution. So spend time on the problem, not on the solution. Einstein had a great quote, slide five. If you had an hour to solve a problem, I'd spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem and five minutes thinking about the solution. So who am I to disagree with Einstein? Definitely uh, not in the same tier of genius as him, nor um, 
anywhere close for that matter. But what Einstein's getting at and what is relevant specifically to product management is being able to talk about the pain and the pain that it's causing. One of the areas, if I go back to that uh, example at the top where I identified that area is, hey, I came in with the solution set. I didn't come in with the problem. If I spun the problem as, hey, we have a revenue generation challenge. One of our revenue generation challenges is that globally, we are reliant on one region versus another. Laying that problem out, showcasing that, hey, we really need to solve this issue. Now, what are our alternatives on solving these issues? Well, it depends on what area we want to focus in on. So we did a cross analysis of the problem and figuring out where the biggest pain relative to that is and why these things are happening. Creating alternatives, providing a prioritization to those alternatives and assessing and making a recommendation. That's all based off of problem identification and definition. You're able to get to the alternatives and finally the solution by zoning in on that specific problem and figuring it out from there. Too often, we, especially in the software space, we, we try to force feed a solution that's going to work for everyone, right? So, oh, great, we just, we just uh, adopted X, Y, and Z as a service platform. That's going to solve all our problems. No, maybe not. If you spend time on figuring out what the root of the problem is, maybe your platform solves it, maybe it doesn't. So then you don't waste time on trying to pre-wire a solution that's not going to drive the KPIs that you want to see impacted. Which raises another key point is that during your problem identification, you should have key qual and quant elements to both. You're gonna to wanna to be able to assess it with hard metrics, but you're also gonna want qualitative data because there's so much understanding and better, um, better clarity when you're talking to people about the problem too. So sometimes, often the problem isn't being accurately measured with certain metrics. So the qual helps. So if you focus in on that definition, you won't be in a place where you're trying to pitch a solution that may not be solving the problem that you're aiming to go after and you're not wasting people's time. So let's move on to the next piece, which is tell me the story. And if you understand your network and you understand the problem you're solving, then you're pitching, you're selling. ABCs, always be selling, right? Um, and that's not a C, by the way. That would be an S, always be selling. But um, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, anyone? Yeah, I may be getting old for that reference. Anyways, with that said, um, Simon Sinek, everyone's probably aware of this, the power of why, the importance of why. You start with why, right? And you work your way out. If you're able to tell the why, you can then get to the how, and you can then get to the what. And when you're telling a story, why often has an amazing flavor, right? So I'm not necessarily pitching something as, hey, it's a great revenue generator. No, I'm, I'm seeking to provide the best customer impact, the best customer experience that's going to entrench customers within my solution set, that's gonna create engagement, that's going to drive revenue. So what am I trying to do? I'm trying to solve human problems and telling a story around that rather than focusing in on some of the nuts and the bolts of business. There's a better connection to lifestyle, to life connections, to meaning. You know, I, I believe Google's is to organize the world's information, right? So that's the why and the why they're doing it and making it more productive and accessible for, for the world. Um, attaching to a greater purpose helps the story resonate um, and it takes kind of the coldness off of it. So check out Simon Sinek's uh, uh, 
a video um, is TED Talk. Uh, it's easily Googleable, Googleable, if you will. Um, so check that out. Uh, also, I included the elements of storytelling. So, you know, what is the question that you're asking? Acquiring the information, analyzing the data, organizing your thoughts and information, embracing revisions, and getting user feedback, and taking actions. Uh, National Geographic did a really nice job with this infographic. Check it out. It has some interesting tidbits relative to the details on storytelling and how you can go there. Be mindful, however, that in some organizations, I know Dell and Apple are very much like this, is tell me the answer first. So you have to come locked and loaded with an executive summary slide. And then after you tell the, the stakeholder, you tell the uh, the decision maker, since we are building relationships, not you know team building, or excuse me, not just uh, pre-wiring stakeholders here. Uh, th when you're when you're informing and building that relationship with that stakeholder, you're giving them the information they need to, and then you kind of back into the story. So be mindful that that changes per organization as well. Okay, so we we uh, we covered know your team, the problem, not the solution. Tell me the story, and now we're on establish a brand. So who are you? I mean, I feel like that. That's been a question in every Star Wars movie since the start of time. Who are you? What do you stand for? What's your style, right? Um, being able to carry that, that cachet, whatever that delivery mechanism is, showing yourself like who you are, your personality, that matters. If you're able to better communicate that via any medium, any method, in whatever you're doing. If you're on a conference call, if you're on a presentation like this, um, if you're trying to pitch your idea to a larger stakeholder, you have to have a brand and you have to build that over time. That's not something you walk in with, but you can have flavors of that personality showcased in a broader organizational sense, right? So, um, you know, in, in meetings, you know, making sure you have compassion and empathy and that you're engaging. Um, and you know, if you're not at that warm and fuzzy, find areas where you can enable that type of small talk, give your team a sense, give, uh, uh, your larger, broader net, larger, broader network and understanding of what you're about and who you are, uh, and how you go about your business. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent serious all the time. Um, it doesn't have to be business all the time, right? You're going to have to let people in to a certain extent, extent, let them know who you are as a person and connect with them on that level. And then you can start establishing your brand as tr trustworthy, reliable, and high quality work. And that's the real goal of where you want to go. Uh, so that brand is super critical on then allowing you to have the credibility to raise into a higher executive level audience for you to tell your story, to solve problems and know that network to, to communicate like, well, hey, you know, I talked to Bob about this. I talked to Sarah about this. I talked to Sage about this. Um, and they all, they all knew and aligned and agreed. Um, so definitely, you know, powerful there. So establishing that brand and that credibility is huge when you're thinking about the next level and these next steps on, um, you know, overall building relationships and not just managing stakeholders. So last bit, uh, and then I'll wrap everything up, is timing is everything. Uh, I mentioned this at the top, right? It's best probably not to pitch an idea at Apple during Black Friday, Christmas, or an iPhone launch, or any launch for that matter. There's a time and a place. And understanding that within your organizational sense um, does take a, a better understanding of what's going on, but also awareness, right? So don't only think about your own self-interest understand what's going on in a broader sense across your organization that ties back in to knowing your network by having consistent one-on-ones with people you're able to better drive that communication to better understand what's happening in the org and drive meaningful results as um, as the impact that you continue to accrue 
Um, so that the timing piece, if that's not spot on, your idea is going to be straight armed and pushed to the side and disregarded um, if you're not very cognizant of that. So overall, I've been recapping a lot, but I'll do it again. Know your network, know your audience, double click on those decision makers and those stakeholders, get down to the IC level, make sure that you understand the power and their self-interest relative to goals and create an engagement strategy. Second piece is the problem, not the solution. Start with the problem, spend the majority of your time identifying what that is, then backing into alternatives, then going into solutions. You'll save yourself a lot of time and you'll and, and it'll be a well thought out solution at that point. Because everyone's going to be asking you, what about this? What about this? What about this? And you'll have an answer to that because you've thought deeply about that fundamental problem. Third piece is tell a story. Focus in on the why. Why are you doing things? Are you trying to make humanity better? Are you trying to make your customer experience better? Well, why are you doing that? Because you want to educate people. Because you want to organize knowledge. What are? Why are you doing that? Um, so being able to tell that story of why and peppering in that understanding. People love stories. We, from the start of time, that's, that's how humanity learned with them. Fourth piece, have a brand. Establish one, whether it's quick, reliable, trustworthy, thoughtful. All these things, who you are, let your personality shine through and don't be afraid of it. And then the fifth, timing is everything. Um, know the organization, where they at, where they are at relative to release cycles. Is leadership stressed out? Is now the right time to bring up new ideas? How are things going? These are all key in getting buy-in towards your solution. So a couple of books to check out. Uh, Advocacy, uh, John Daly, a professor of mine at the University of Texas. He does an excellent job of talking about advocating ideas. First 90 Days, excellent book, um, breaks out shadow organizations and how to pre-wire initially and understand what's happening in an organization early on in your, in your journey and your career with them. Simon Sinek, um, TED Talk, uh, freaking amazing. Check that out as well. Um, if you want to get in contact with me, uh, would love to chat, open to any sort of communication. Uh, I'm active on LinkedIn. Hit me up. You'll see my profile list there. Uh, Twitter, jswitek84. Um, absolutely on Twitter as well. And if you want to email me direct, jeff.switek at gmail. Uh, look forward to hearing for you, from you. And thank you for spending this time with me today. Um, and remember, um, it's really all about relationship building and team building and, and having compassion and empathy with people. And it's not just the X's and O's of business and or stakeholder management. So talk soon and thanks again. Bye.